The prospect of the Atlanta Falcons trading star wideout Julio Jones went from passive off-season speculation to the top of social media feeds this week. All it took was for Jones to take a phone call from Shannon Sharp and declare, I'm out of there, man, while seemingly unaware he was live on TV. NFL media's Ian Rappaport subsequently reported that Jones had requested a trade a few months ago and that the team agreed to consider offers. As crazy as it might seem for Atlanta to trade one of its cornerstone players, a complex set of factors has brought things to this point. Let's break it down. Sit back, relax, and take this in. Atlanta is in the midst of a rebuild. Well, sort of. The Falcons have had three straight losing seasons and their 4-12 finish in 2020 led to changes at the top of the football operation, with Terry Fontenot taking over as general manager and Arthur Smith as head coach. But Atlanta notably did not draft a quarterback with the fourth overall pick, opting instead to double down on 36-year-old Matt Ryan by restructuring his contract. It wasn't just Ryan either. The Falcons also reworked deals for left tackle Jake Matthews and linebacker Deion Jones. Combined with Ryan's restructure, these moves saved more than $26 million against the 2021 salary cap. Atlanta's strategy is to build off its current roster rather than attempt a teardown. The selection of all-world tight end Kyle Pitts with the number four pick sets up the tantalizing possibility of Ryan having Pitts, Jones, and Calvin Ridley as targets, with Smith and offensive coordinator Dave Ragone queuing up a play-action heavy scheme on the order of what Kyle Shanahan did in 2016 with Ryan as the league MVP and damn near won the Super Bowl. But there is a problem. Even after all the cap gymnastics, the Falcons still find themselves cap strapped. Atlanta has just $358,694 in available cap room, which isn't enough to sign its draft class. The Falcons have a league high 38.1% of their cap tied up in what over the cap categorizes as the elite tier or top 32 of cap commitments. Nearly $71 million of their cap resources this year is slated to go to Ryan Jones and defensive tackle Grady Jarrett. Had there been no pandemic, this wouldn't be an issue since the league-wide cap would presumably be much higher. The Falcons also have better depth at receiver than they do on the defensive line, which might explain why Jones is being dangled in the first place. Jones is under contract through 2023. Per over the cap, he's slated to count about $23 million against the cap this year and just over $19.2 million million in both 2022 and 2023. But the figure to keep in mind here is the $23.25 million in dead money Atlanta would have to eat by trading him, which brings us to June 1st. By trading Jones after June 1st, the Falcons would be permitted to spread that dead money hit across two seasons. A post-June 1st trade would allow Jones's 2021 cap hit to fall to $7.75 million, with the remaining $15.5 million in dead money hitting the books in 2022. That's a save savings of $15.3 million in 2021, which would allow the Falcons to breathe a little bit more. The structure of Jones's deal is also palatable for potential trade partners. He's owed a fully guaranteed $15.3 million in salary in 2021, but just over $11.5 million in both 2022 and 2023. That's a three-year average of $12.7 million, which would rank just 20th among all wide receivers in average annual value. On top of that, the only thing guaranteed to Jones after 2021 is $2 million of his 2022 salary. A potential trade partner could therefore add Jones at a reasonable price for up to three years with virtually nothing tying its hands financially after 2021 if Jones's performance were to crater. Potential trade suitors include the Jaguars, Patriots, Colts, Chargers, and 49ers. But it's worth noting that as many as 12 teams have at least $13 million in cap space that would allow them to absorb Jones's $15.3 million salary either completely or with some slight alterations to the balance sheet. Jones hasn't lost much time across his 10-year career. A broken foot limited him to five games played in 2013, and he was only out for a total of four games from 2014 to 2019. But last season, he missed seven games with a hamstring injury, and he's now 32 years old. Jones' age is a concern, but it's not a cause for alarm. He's caught at least 70 passes in seven of his 10 seasons, and there's nothing to suggest that he can't do it again. Per StatHead, a receiver has caught 70 or more passes at age 30, 32 or later, 95 times in NFL history, and a number of wideouts have done it more than once. Jerry Rice did it seven times, Tim Brown and Chris Carter did it five times, Larry Fitzgerald still going and about to turn 38 
has done it four times. Sports Illustrated's Albert Breer suggested that because Jones has had to manage the effects of a broken foot, dating back to before he was drafted, he could extend his career by settling into more of a slot type role in the coming years, as Fitzgerald has done. ESPN's Adam Schefter reported Monday that the Falcons have been demanding a first round draft pick in exchange for Jones, but his age and that limited number of potential trade partners seems to be hurting his trade value. Breer thinks Atlanta would be willing to move Jones for a second rounder. Atlanta could also just decide to keep Jones and let him wing it with Ryan, Pitts, and Ridley for at least a year. Jones's contract would be even easier to move next year when all that's left on it will be two years and just over $23 million with just two million in guarantees. But did Jones foreclose on that option with his comments to Shannon Sharp? I guess we'll find out soon enough.